All right, so in today's video, we are going to talk about how you can start with a very small musical little phrase um, with a sonokinetic phrase and build upon it. So we're going to first play this passage and then we're going to break it down and look at how it was made. So let's take a look at uh, what instruments were used and the thoughts behind uh, this idea. So with sonokinetic libraries, you have access to so many beautiful phrases all at once. Um, it can be overwhelming. So it's a good idea to start with one simple idea, one little phrase, build some beautiful chords with that, and then build track by track your musical idea or your song. So let's take a look at how we did that here. And um, with our first uh, phrase, and we have all the other phrases turned off in Indy, and Indy is our first track up here. So let's listen to this first musical idea and see how we built this song, or this part of a song. So with that initial kind of, uh, if we look at it here, it's um, it's under the melodic percussion uh, section, and it's a little um, idea that I'm going to build upon. So this is the initial. So I turned off all the other, and that's why you've seen this little error message because the samples were turned off. That. Uh, but I'm going to turn them back on one by one. And we're going to listen because the first five chords are repeating. And we, won't, we don't want that to get uh, annoying. We want to build upon that and keep it interesting for the ear as it plays through. So now we're going to add the second uh, uh, instrument, which is in the same section, and, um, but a little different. All right, so let's go back, and we have that second one, which will come in at bar four, which will keep the ear interested. And it's following the same pattern, the same chords. So in this way, we're able to build on our little musical idea with some nicely controlled chords and start to layer and add instruments upon that. So now if we switch tracks and go to the ostinato strings track, we'll see that we've copied the same basic chords from our first indie musical idea, but we've copied it to the ostinato strings track. And that's going to come in at bar four. We're going to get some of this bass and um, ostinato strings section coming in here. And uh, let's play it. And you'll notice that I have just one of these two lower instruments. So we're getting cello and bass, I believe. So, And it's going to just play a solid, uh, very slow rhythm with its, uh, at its slowest setting here. So let's listen. Mm -hmm. 
So what we have is our basic uh, initial idea, very simple on those chords, simply copied to another track, and we have another layer, this time the, the bass layer of the strings of, with a very simple um, ostinato, very slow. And that's our next layer. So let's look at Indy again and uh, see how we have some uh, higher strings coming in next. So at bar six now, we're going to have this string quartet come in. So the string quartet section. And um, it's playing, I believe, this one. So now we're going to introduce a bit of a lead line in here. And uh, let's listen to that play. And you'll also hear the ostinato strings come in at bar four on this track. So you'll hear that out of this one phrase, we've got so much out of that because the phrase linking is turned on down here. It will play everything that was recorded on that for this phrase. So we actually got a lot out of that phrase and it will play on later um, for if we wanted to continue on in this track, we may break it for a while as we do here. But we may decide to bring it back in at maybe bar 26 if we were to continue this idea. So that gives us a nice interesting kind of lead line. Now let's look at the next layer. All right, so the next layer will be a nice cello that comes in at bar 12. And that's on this line here with this key switch here. So, and let's just listen to its demo. So again, you can at any time take a look at what it is. In this case, the cello for four bars. Um, that's its full recording. And um, so that's going to come in just before we change the idea and go into, we switch it up a little bit. So that'll kind of bring in uh, a new lower section to kind of foreshadow what the change at 14. So let's listen to it. And we'll start it at, say, bar 9. So sometimes with phrases, you need to start from the beginning for it to um, completely cycle. Over there, it was not linking up there. So to reset the linking phrase linking, sometimes you have to start at the beginning. So let's just do that. We're back at the beginning and now it'll play everything in sequence. But here at bar 12 it'll come in. And that sets us up for the bar uh, 14, where it's going to change and we're going to bring in our next layer. So now at bar 14, it's an important bar because it introduces not only the next uh, indie instrument, uh, being this and a demo. So this carries on with our lead violins or lead strings high strings and give some more variation as we move forward. But it also introduces the big Largo strings. So if we drag that in here. So on bar 14, these big Largo strings come in and uh, we listen to it. I believe it's this one. And if we turn on it, so let's listen again. So this brings in some nice soaring strings, and if 
we um, want it to be uh, because Indy is recorded more more close uh, mic'd. We could go to the microphones in Largo, which are more broad, soaring, bigger reverb, bigger hall mic'd sound. We could go and go to the mics and say, well, we could go DECA, but we could also add the close mics to make it a little more intimate and drag it a little bit halfway. So now we have some close mics with our soaring strings, which because they're all recorded in the same hall anyway, will make the soaring strings bring them a little closer to our quartets and our section strings. So it's all going to blend a little bit better that way. All right, so these Largo strings will come in at 14 with our second version of our lead uh, violins or strings here. So let's listen to that now, if I got everything set up. And let's, um, we'll have to play it from the beginning for it to all coordinate. So let's go back to the beginning. And these are the same chords I copied to Largo track. So, same type, but I cut some out. So, at 18 now, we have uh, our next uh, different instruments coming in, and that'll be an ostinato brass. And I believe on the indie track at 21, so at 18, we have the ostinato brass coming in, but we also have some brass from indie. So we'll look at that next. So the same thing with the ostinato brass, I copied those chords. Just a, I took a chunk of the chords from up here. So we're not changing chords at all. We're reusing our chords, but we're bringing it in for different layered uh, instruments when we want them to pop in and match with our chords on our main track. So we have the ostinato brass, which is going to be playing just high brass. So the high brass are going to be playing, and it's going to be playing a fairly slow um, movement and uh, that will add to the brass we have coming in at, uh, I believe, 18. And that is this one right here. So that's... And that is going to be adding some kind of uh, brass and horn elements. And then uh, finally, at 21, and we'll probably finish this uh, part here, this section here. We just have an interesting kind of flourish with some quartet strings just to add and bring in more volume as we build and build and build from our original idea. So knowing all that and knowing that the brass is coming in, Largo, let's just go back from the beginning and play the whole thing knowing now how we built a track and instrument one at a time.
um, just a couple ending notes would be that if you notice up here on the chord track, um, it was easy to take these initial chords that uh, we started with, with that initial kind of percussion uh, here at the uh, initial stage, it was very easy to take that, these chords, and just move them up here. And so now, having all the chords on the chord track, we're able to add anything at any time. We could go to band in the box, and because we know the chords, we could put these chords in the band in the box, and I could say, okay, now I want to have a classical guitar play along for the next chorus and verse up here. So when you build a, a song idea with this structure and a solid um, chord base and then put it on your, you know, your chord track, you're really set up to build all kinds of musical ideas from this. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little video today and had a chance to make music wherever you're at in the world. And please join me on my next video.